heroines of streaming, the stream series where I play video games with uh, heroine characters <laughs> as the primary character. It's pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, uh, I guess it's October or whatever, so I'm going to play like spooky games because that's what all my friends are doing. You know everyone changes their name on social media and all that gubbins. Anyway, we're going to start off with a game that my friend Zach uh, recommended to me and it's based on the Disney ride Haunted Mansion and yeah that's the thing in Disneyland so it's part of this tradition of um, other media based on Disney rides which I'll get into later like games and movies so um, this is a game that was never released commercially it was cancelled at the last minute Hi Gibbon, how's it going? Um, actually, this logo is pretty much from the movie, isn't it? I don't know. I should have looked that up, but anyway. Uh, there was a console game on Xbox, PS2, and GameCube in November... No, October 2003. The movie was released uh, in November. Yeah, so they made the game to tie in with the release of the movie. Uh, more or less, uh, except that the game isn't based on the movie. It's it's more just making a new story that's based on the ride. Um, you're not going to see Eddie Murphy in this game. So, the the console game um, is sort of set in ye olde times, um, and the protagonist is this guy called Zeke. I'm just going to check out the options. Yeah, okay. Oh, the credits are here. Let's watch those because they're not on Moby Games. This game doesn't have, have an entry on Moby Games because it was never actually released. Um, so here's the people who were involved. We, we might not get to the end of the actual game, so I'll watch this now. But yeah, anyway. Um, so the game, the console game is one thing. The GBA game here that I'm playing is a different thing um, with a different protagonist and... Obviously, f to fit my theme for the year, it's a lady. And it's set in the modern day, so that actually plays into the mechanics of the game, as we'll see. Um, yeah, so, ah, Tony's here. Good to see you. He's my resident expert on all things Disney, so hopefully he can uh, chip in a bit about the, the ride and the lore and stuff. He's already started by saying he wonders if Hattie is in this game. I don't know who Hattie is exactly. Have we started repeating yet? Anyway, let's start the game. Uh, this game is available online. It was dumped. The ROM of it was dumped, um, even though the release of the game was cancelled. So there's no box art, no manual or anything, but the game exists in an almost completed state. So probably the most interesting thing about the game, other than its like development history, a lot of which is a bit unknown. I mean, we don't know why it was cancelled anyway. The theory I saw was that the publisher TDK Media Active was bought out by T Take Two and they were unhappy with the, uh, just the, the game. They were unhappy with the state of the game and they cancelled it. All right. Um, all is still. The night was falling. Three friends feel the mansion calling. Gates crack open, should they enter here? When this night is over, they will know their fear. <laughs> Spooky laughter. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, the most interesting thing about the game is the graphics engine or the gameplay engine or whatever, the 3D uh, effect, which is rare for the Game Boy Advance. And a lot of developers tried different tricks to make you know, exciting, modern looking 3D games on the GBA. And this was an attempt at that as well. Spirits roam this old mansion's floors. If they catch you, your soul won't be yours. Some forced rhymes here. Spend the night, find the cards, escape the ghosts, fail and you'll join your spectral hosts. <laughs> cool. So Hattie, says Tony, is an animatronic from the mansion that was removed days after the ride opened. He's very popular and they fixed his animatronic two years ago for Disneyland in Anaheim. Tokyo, Orlando, etc. don't have him. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I assume he has a hat of some kind. Um, why was he removed? Performance of the animatronic, perhaps? 
Gibbon is excited about Mega Man 11. His copy just arrived. That's nice. I've been meaning to play the demo, actually. Anyway. Your first task is to find both your friends, but even then your night doesn't end. The spirits have trapped the owner's soul. Releasing him is your final goal. It's a frightful journey to find his tomb. One wrong step could spell your doom. I don't know how long this intro is. We're going through this old haunted forest. Yes, very good. Light rays coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so the haunted mansion. Okay, sorry. To solve the secrets of this place, against the clock you must race. Banish the spirits and you'll do well and free Mr. Gracie from his shell. Enter the house, face the test. Fail and your friends eternally rest. So Mr. Gracie is like the host of the ride that you can experience at the ride itself. Um, apparently that name was not given to him in the original ride, but in other sources. Anyway, here's uh, our character. Um, it's a pretty cool design, actually. I don't know if this is something you really would wear in the modern day, but um, maybe she was going to a fancy dress party or something. I do like the two-tone hair, red and black. Um, but yeah, this dress is straight out of, um, well, like, she looks like a vampire or something. Anyway, we pick this up. I don't know what it is. You have found the mobile phone. Explore the, ta the mansion to find some tones. I didn't already have a phone. Select device, select the right tone. You will blast your target with this phone. So there you go. There's your first hint that this is in the modern era. Um, we have a mobile phone. Okay, that's my jump button. Oh, nice. I like that pixel art. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Figuring out how to use this stuff. So, coins, potions, uh, keys. Okay. Uh, the phone, and there's codes for the phone. There's a map. Let's try the map. Okay, that's fair enough. There's a few floors, of course. It's a big mansion. So, how does the phone work? Oh, okay. So it's sending out magical energy beams or something with a click sound. Oh, that's running the battery down. Maybe it's like taking photos of the ghosts is bad for them. Sort of like in, you know, Fatal Frame and there's a sort of Indonesian uh, like knockoff of that called Dread Out where you take phones with your camera phone. You take photos with your camera phone to deal with ghosts. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Haunted Mansion. We are your ghost hosts, Ezra, Gus, and Phineas. Now, I believe these are the hitchhiker ghosts who were like comic relief in the original ride. So that's good. No, stop. We don't need to be using the phone all the time. <laughs> Beautiful. Looks to be... Uh, it's not quite a Nokia 3315, which was the most common phone at that time. It's a slightly upgraded model from that, but I don't know what this is. I guess you get different codes that do different things. Yeah, it's like a magical phone. Who knows? Um, Alright. So Tony is imparting some knowledge here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> the creepy pastor theory about Hattie was that it was so spooky that it made people faint on the ride. The truth is much less sensational. His animatronics gimmick was... Oh, okay. So the statues are shooting stuff at me. See, I have a health bar on the bottom right. Uh, his animatronics gimmick was his head would disappear and reappear in his hat box and it just didn't work 90% of the time so they removed it <laughs> um, oh okay so the hitchhiking ghosts actually ride on your vehicle with you so they have form of sort of running commentary Greek chorus kind of thing alright press B to jump and when you're at its peak then press B again to double jump a remarkable feat oh everything in this game is going to rhyme that's actually really exciting as a fan of Banjo-Kazooie uh, one of the best things was Grunty uh, endlessly heckling you and all her speech patterns were in rhyme it was lovely so looking forward to that oh okay giant carnivorous plant bouncing pot plants interesting okay so from what I know of this game's story which comes from just one website that was supposed to 
I'm, I'm not really sure what the website is. It's like Nintendo X2 something something. I don't know if it's an archive or what, or what but it, it has information about Nintendo games, I guess. And so what it said about this one was that uh, Yaz, Cyrus, and Ricky... Uh, actually, that's all I remember from the description was those names. <laughs> But, you know, it's pretty basic. Cyrus and Ricky got captured by... Or got lost in the mansion or something. And so Yaz here, our protagonist, has to um, infiltrate the mansion and find them before they get, I don't know, killed and become ghosts, I suppose. The garden whispers of the dead. Be careful where you tread. So I did see a hand popping up earlier. Oh, hello. Friendly. Oh, it's a ghost um, groundskeeper. I am Mr. Jones, the caretaker. No, I am Jones. Oh, okay, so this is like a... I'm Jones, the caretaker. The owner, Mr. Gracie, is watching you, Yaz. Beware, I'll try to help you. Find my keys, I lost them on the roof. <laughs> Terrible accent. But yeah, there you go. He's, he's He knows Yaz's name already, and he's going to give it to us. Go to the grand ballroom, Yaz. I've arranged a piece of music that will help you. And he doesn't speak in rhyme, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Just have to move around a bit to enter those doors. Yeah, th so I guess this game, since it wasn't ever technically finished, it might not have had the final QA pass to remove bugs and stuff, so watch out for that. But I will say, so far, I'm impressed by the look of the 3D environment. See how the camera moves in and out? Um, the actual environment seems to be polygonal with uh, these pretty low... Uh, res textures, but impressive all the same. Um, and the actors in the game are all sprites, which does look a bit jarring for certain things that change scale when you're moving around, but that's okay. And the characters look to be pre-rendered uh, sprites. Yes. Go to the grant. Yeah, I already, I already said that. Um, oh, okay. Tony's saying at the end of the ride, you see a mirror and the ghosts are riding with you, so you might not even realize until the end. Um, let's see. Tony says he considers pirates and the haunted mansion to be in the same universe. At the least, the theme park rides are totally... At the very... Oh, at, at least uh, the rides are in the same universe, if not the movies that are based on them. So let's go into the mansion, shall we? And maybe we'll get some more information... Try and find the ballroom. Oh, the caretaker is human, says Tony. Thank you. You see him on the ride, watching in shock as the ghosts sing and dance. He did seem to be kind of monochrome, kind of sepia-toned, so I thought maybe everyone was ghosts around here. Whoops. Yep, the hand. Never mind. Uh, back to the front entrance, yeah. I do have to watch my time as well. Like it said at the start, the time time is, you know, ticking away. I think there's going to be some exposition about that when I enter the mansion. Yeah, can you expand on that, Tony? Why did you say that the rides are in the same universe? That interests me. The interconnected law, because pe the, like the Imagineers, the people who put these together do think about that, and the fans even more uh, think about it as well and make those connections. So, mm. Okay, there's the clock. That should tell us something. The grand hallway with its statues and clock. Lots of doors to explore, some open, some locked. Find your friends and some will open with ease. To unlock the others, you'll need to find keys. Using your phone to blast anything scary will make the battery go flat. Pick up the charges that will take care of that. Okie dokie. So the phone shoots out blasts, good to know. Very fitting. An M. I don't know what that is. The grandfather clock tick tock counts backwards to 13 o'clock. When the clock strikes 13, nobody in the mansion can leave. Spooky. 13 o'clock. This door needs a key. Is this not a door? Maybe it is a door. Um, yes, yeah, so the ride. I know the lore of the ride is that there's 999 ghosts. The door's locked tight, it won't let you pass, but things here can change if you find your friends fast. I need those keys. So 
there's like 999 ghosts in the mansion and they're going to make you into the thousandth ghost if you're not careful or something. Or is that Tower of Terror? You know what? I don't know. They're pretty similar. <laughs> um, ghosts. The Grand Ballroom is full of sound. Guess what you have found? You still have plenty of time, so go and attack that old horn vine. Go to the inventory to enter this code into your mobile phone. Pick up these scrolls. They're passwords in part. And next time you play this is where you will start. Oh, sorry. The cadence was wrong there, but okay. All right, new code. Do I have to write these down? Just in case. I have a pad right here. Well, I will have in a second. Hold on. Hold on. To get past all the card game scores and stuff. Okay. H N G J R S L Y O D seven T eight W. So using this code input thingy, you can also enter cheat codes to unlock things. There's a few of them listed on uh, the cutting room floor. So we've got codes. Oh boy. So, oh, it's, it's preloaded. Okay, I don't even. Oh, the code is my password to restart to restart from there. If I um, yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice sound effects. Cool. We destroyed the plant <laughs> with a special code <laughs> that could kill the plant or the spell that I had to select from the menu. Yeah, so the code was a password. There's no save state. So there's no save games. There's passwords. Okay. You've picked up the horn vine game card. Banishing horn vines now won't be that hard. Now you have this card, you can search the mansion for more. Some you'll find easy. Some will be a chore. When you fight cards, time is on your side to get to the hidden places. Play the card game at the ghost rides. Yeah, some of the lines and don't quite have the same number of syllables in them, but that's okay. Looks like these ghosts aren't interactable. In fact, they're dangerous. They're killing me. So I think the spell to kill the vine is what the caretaker was telling me about. You have received a charge boost for your device. Visit recharge machine to restore the charge boosts. Okay, where's the recharge machine? You have picked up the grand ballroom game card. So collecting cards is a thing. Nope, not that menu. How do I see like my card list? There it is. No, that's a map. I don't know. No, well, I guess it's not a thing. <clears throat> Can I interact with piano? It doesn't look like it. Okay. So Tony's Oh yeah, the key. Tony's talking about the connections. Um, so when you're in Disneyland in Anaheim, uh, New Orleans Square is where both rides are located. That is Pirates and Haunted Mansion. Um, paranormal strange stuff happens in this land for some reason. Not sure if Tokyo replicates this, but in Pirates you're going through a nice ride through the bayou and when you fall down a waterfall, the waterfall transports you back in time to the time of the pirates. And at the end of the ride, you travel up a river to return to the present time. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I do not recall that happening in Tokyo, no. Gargoyles, skeletons, and rats attack from all around. Use L and R buttons to shoot up and down. Hit enough and you'll regain some health. So. Ah, so I've been aiming up. It's a bit hard to tell yeah okay so if there's rats shoot them down on the ground okay so not only we have the we have the third dimension to contend with of course this is a 3d game yeah the charge right okay so those instantly refill your phone but to replenish them you have to find a recharge machine or something i don't know okay throwing axes it's not nice hey buddy how about you take some of this Pow, 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 pow. Oops. Oh, well, whatever. Bats. Oh, a gargoyle? Yeah. <laughs> Sound effects are a little absurd. 
that's okay. Now up a bit, no, down a bit. Yeah, like this. Ah, never mind. Okay, three, four more doors out of this room. I'll take the right one first. Oh, this is gonna get confusing, but at least I have a map. No, wrong button, keep pressing on that. Still, I keep getting start and select confused. That's a constant problem. So I've come in here. This room doesn't look like it matches the layout of the room I'm in. Oh well, I'll go through here. Oh, it's locked. Where are those keys? Didn't the caretaker said he left some on this floor? I'm on the upper floor. Maybe I was looking at that map orientation the wrong way. Oh, what's this? That's a different symbol. It's a different looking key? Ugh. This is really confusing. Okay. We'll, we'll head to the right then. So what's this? A giant? No, it's a chair. Okay. It looked like a giant keyhole. Um, yeah, so Tony continues, New Orleans is known for both pirates in the past and supposed haunted mansions existing there. Other Disney parks muddle it a lot. Um, he says Orlando has it in pirates in advent has uh, the pirates ride in Adventureland, which is dumb, according to Tony. <laughs> but the intention is that they both take place in New Orleans, steps away from each other. That's really cool. Thanks for that. Ugh. Everything's locked. I need to find the path that is not locked yet. And then hopefully some more will open up. Better check up here. What do we deal with these brooms? Pow. Take that. It's a bit Sorcerer's Apprentice, isn't it? Are there, talk are there walking brooms in, um, or mops in the ride? I don't know. So... I should say, I have been to Disneyland, but I was very young. My family uh, traveled a fair bit, so we um, we did go to the California Disneyland at some point. I uh, hoped I could pick that up, that it was something useful, but it appears to be background scenery. So I may have been on Haunted Mansion, but I would have been quite young and I don't remember it. I might have been scared, really scared by it, I don't know. Um, but I do remember going to Tokyo Disneyland. Why don't we shoot these rats and maybe get some health back? Good. Um, so yeah, when I was in Tokyo Disneyland... Oh, that's right, the double jump. I love having a double jump in a game. It's good stuff. So when I was in Tokyo Disneyland, it was uh, end of the year time. It was December. So... There's a seasonal uh, reskinning of the Haunted Mansion ride that changes it from the usual theme to a uh, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas theme with, you know, Jack Skellington and all that uh, stuff. <laughs> I've seen the movie. Mm. Where are the friends? I'm going outside again. Maybe talk to the ta caretaker again and get a hint. <laughs> Tony's saying that right now in the normal Disneyland as well, it's been changed to Nightmare Before Christmas theme and he can't stand it. He says that's a liberty. Ouch. Nothing more over here. I guess I'll try and... Well, these ones are tough. <laughs> I like that you're using a magic phone to attack. It's kind of silly. Um, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. Um, Tony said I was right about the 999 ghost thing. That's part of the lore here. I've seen the Eddie Murphy movie, but I can't tell you if that's part of the story of that, how faithful it is to the ride. Aha, a new code, Eagle Statue. 
So now I can destroy those. That would be nice. I'll switch to that. Because there was one just over there. 391. Kill eagles. Oops, what's this? Oh, a password, of course. Bonus location card. Nice. If only I knew how to access my cards. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not wrong, Tony. Um, I agree, actually. Haunted Mansion by itself is an IP, so adding characters like the um, Nightmare Before Christmas stuff to the ride misses the point. Why do you need it to cross over with Jack Skellington, he says. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing that why Tony was so mad about Tower of Terror being changed into a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. And that has, that unlike Nightmare Before Christmas, that doesn't seem to be temporary. There's no sign of that changing back. So, yeah. It's like, were they not... Like, there's a lot of thought that goes into making these rides and a lot of creative energy and effort. Um, so to then turn around and go, oh, we're going to replace it with, you know, a movie tie-in. Is it... Does it seem like it's lacking confidence or just that it's a cheap cash-in? The conservatory's gone mad. The plants have all turned bad. Plants, I know how to deal with those. By using the plant code. Pew pew. Ouch. Let's deal with the mice first. Rats, whatever they are. They're pretty large, so probably rats. Rats aren't evil, though. Oh, come on. There we go. Alright, I've run pretty short on charge, so... Good. Yikes. Yeah, the sound effects <laughs> is something I think they probably should have... They probably would have uh, tightened up before the game actually released. Ah, charge. Wonderful. Yes, I know. You don't have to tell me every time. So here's a new character. Um, hello? Ugh, stupid plant. <laughs> hello! Uh, hold on. Go around this way. Hello! Okay. Press A to boost your speed while you're in this ride. Avoid the ghosts and creatures whom try to collide. I don't think that's a proper use of whom. Pick up the potions to left and right. Collect them all and lose your fright. Great, that seems like a save state point. We're going on a ride. Oh, what's this? Uh, okay, so here's where the cards come into it. I guess. We're playing a card game. All right, Hornvine versus Piano. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I can't really change anything here, so. Oh, I lost, okay, <laughs> whatever. I'm Ramsley the butler, and here is a gate. I hold two cards that will decide your fate. Match or beat the fright value of my cards with cards of your own, and then you can enter the ghost ride alone. If you lose the game, you'll stay where you are until you find more mansion game cards. Okay. I feel like I got some text boxes in the wrong order there, but that's okay. Oh, the plant's back. Lovely. So maybe I'll get some more cards if I go and destroy some eagle statues. So I'll go try that. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Right. So I did see uh, someone playing part of that ride, so I do know what to expect. It's sort of a first-person thing where the 3D graphics are even more dodgy than usual. Um, I can recommend that video, by the way. It's an episode of... Um, do 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 what was the title of it? Ports Center, episode number 53. It was pretty interesting. Um, it was about this game specifically, the GBA version, and how, uh, what, what they know about it, and facts and information. Pretty interesting stuff. Okay, that didn't give me anything. Ooh, what's this? A statue or two. They always hide something important for you. You can break statues by finding the right phone codes to destroy them. 
You're rich. Find a coin and make a wish. Use coins at fortune teller machines. Cool. Ah, <sighs> okay. So, uh, Tony was continuing to talk here and chat a bit. The Pixar Pier thing, he says, is the biggest mess. So that's another example of them taking a, an attraction or an area that existed and reskinning it to be more like um, like a movie IP or something. Grand Hallway, okay. <laughs> but Tony says he'll stop complaining about that because this is about Haunted Mansion. We should be talking about that. Um... Tony's saying he thinks Tower of Terror is connected with Haunted Mansion. Tower of Terror is pretty interesting. Um, in the main Disneyland, what, uh, Anaheim was it? Yeah. It's kind of a licensed ride based on the Twilight Zone. Oh, okay. I should pick those up. I picked up a shrink mixed with gold, silver, bronze leaf, a perfect tonic for Keys' teeth. Find a door with a matching key symbol to unlock it. What? Okay, so there's different symbols. Did I get a key or do I need to make one somehow? Picked up a grow, mixing with leaf. <laughs> what? I don't understand. This is, um, like they said in that uh, port center review, this is, these sort of mechanics that are kind of confusing would have been cleared up probably by the manual, um, <laughs> but since the game wasn't released, I don't, we don't have access to that. Anyway, uh, yeah, Tower of Terror. So it, it has some kind of Twilight Zone thing in the main Disneyland. I don't really know what it is, but in Tokyo Disneyland, uh, where there's also a Tower of Terror, it's not connected to Twilight Zone. It has its own story um, and concept. So... <laughs> They're both the most popular rides with the longest wait list for cast members. Maybe I need to use the grow thing in the conservatory, perhaps, to get the right key. Keys. I don't know why they spell keys like that. And keys appears to be the singular form of the word. <laughs> yeah, Tony says he considers Tokyo's Tower of Terror the canon version. You have to get a translation though, it's all uh, imparted to you in Japanese language. Um, oh, Tony was excited to see the ballroom. Fortune teller machines are another Disney reference. Oh, and Tokyo's Tower of Terror is, has a connection to the Jungle Cruise. So yeah, it's all, it's all there. Yes, I know. I guess I'll go to the conservatory. So no, that was locked. Did I try going through the... I haven't since I got that other thing, but I don't know what it is really. Yeah, okay, so. I picked up some things that might help me make it keys, possibly. Anyway, oh, he's going into it. That's wonderful. The hotel's owner, so the owner of the Tower of Tower Hotel, Harrison Hightower, was one of the founders of the Jungle Cruise. And while he was there, he found the idol that cursed him. Um, yeah, while he was on a Jungle Cruise expedition. Yeah, you do sort of get that from the, the waiting queue, which goes through the lobby of the hotel. It has all these paintings on the walls of his exploits Harrison Hightower's exploits, which mostly involves, you know, rampant imperialism of him. You know, he's a British colonial guy. He goes to all these other um, countries and cultures and plunders all their artifacts and stuff. Oh, okay, so there's a door. Okay. So it's all connected. Do they have the Tiki Room in Tokyo? I don't think so. I don't recall going to it. So no, that's like a restaurant bar kind of thing, isn't it? Okay, give me another hint. Mansion, statues, hold secrets. Yeah, I did that already, dude. Thanks for the tip. The... Whoa! Whoa! I thought he was flying away, but he came back. Just another one of those bugs. 
the grand hallway. So is that the main entrance? Because I went there and I did use the phone on the eagle statue and I got a card for the grand hallway. Yes, okay, good. Whew. Right. Cool. The Tiki Room is a classic attraction which Tony considers part of the park's universe. Fair enough. Um, it's a show with birds singing to you and it's kind of just silly fluff. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Now we're fine. Hmm. I wonder what that skull emblem is next to the heart. I don't know. I think I, he's only talking about the eagle statues, so maybe I'll go check those out again. Yeah, I already did that. Haven't learnt any new spells. All right, I'll go in through the ballroom. Nope, wrong place. I forgot where I was. I'm lost. <sighs> okay, so stuff. I guess I can talk about the development of the game. So the console version, like I said, it was released in October of 2003 uh, in the US. It was released in Europe the following year. Um, the movie came out a month later in the US, or in North America, I should say. And yeah, so we've got, it's weird how there's like these three different themes. The movie has its own sort of plot. Uh, And the two games have different main characters, although I suppose we might run into familiar denizens of the mansion if we continue. Mm -mm -mm. So the console game was made by a company called High Voltage Interactive. No, High Voltage Software. They're a US-based company. Um, I looked through their development, their, their gameography, and it's pretty impressive, actually. A lot of things I recognized and appreciate Kill the eagles. Oops, I'm out of charge. Oh, that's not good. I picked up all the charges I found and I don't know how to recharge them. Awkward. Um, strange device indeed that you will always have a need. Machine resets all the charges. Good. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. I don't know what it's supposed to represent, but it reset the charges. And now it's one in the ballroom, so let's go get it. Yeah, um, so looking through the list of things that High Voltage Software made, I recognized things like Lego Races, um, the console version they did, that was on the 64 and PC, I think. They did Paperboy 64 as well, so a sequel to the classic NES game. Um, they made a bunch of sports games, they made one of the installments in the Leisure Suit Larry series, which I, ah, if Zach was here, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. I already got a coin, hmm, I don't know, whatever. What else did they do? They made um, a Harvey Birdman licensed game. Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. Um, there was a game for PSP and I think PS2, maybe something else, that was sort of a, an ace, a Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney clone, like a courtroom simulation kind of thing. So there's kind of a hidden door at the clock. I don't know what the M means. All right. What else did they do? The Conduit on Wii, which was a renowned at the time like first person shooter that used the Wii Remote pointer controls. Um, Nicktoons MLB, a baseball game based on Nickelodeon cartoons, which I know because uh, it's one of the playable appearances of the Avatar The Last Airbender characters. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing at this point, I'm just wandering around. I haven't really found anything that would let me progress. 
I guess I found an extra card or two. Why don't we go back to the butler and see if we can beat him at the card game this time. Uh, they also made Connect Star Wars and a few other Connect games like Pixar Rush Adventure or whatever that was. Um, I appreciate Connect Star Wars because it adds to the lore of the Clone Wars and stuff. Yeah, I'm lame. Oh, and of course it has the fun dance mode where you get like I'm Han Solo dancing, Palpatine dancing, stuff like that. Okay, to the conservatory. And they, oh yeah, I guess recently the thing High Voltage Software have done is Mortal Kombat games and Injustice. So that's a thing. Okay, nice. Again, we've got this uh, portrait art here. All right, so nothing I press changes anything. So I just have to press A to choose. And now 30, 20, 20. I'll pick the highest value one, Grand Hallway. Oh, is that me going against him? Because he's picked the Horn Vine, so I can pick something that's less value. Or am I combining two things? Oh, okay. So I combine a creature card and a, an area card. So I go back to choosing and I'll pick something with a higher value because I can see that he's picked a 30 and something else. So the best I can do is a 30 and a 10. Play. Ah, we're matched. And that's good enough to get me in. Okay, great. <laughs> so that was the answer. That was the progress. Okay, so first person roller coaster minecart track kind of thing. What? Uh, excuse me? What happened? Oh, do I have to do this again? Where did I save? All right, I saved right at the start of this, so. Okay, so I'm moving a hand around. Why did that, why have I stopped straight away? Do I have to press a, okay. So I'm pressing uh, A to continue and I'm moving the hand to pick up stuff. So I pick up charges to keep the minecart going, I guess. Nice little music track here, actually. Jaunty, spooky kind of thing. So what this really reminds me of is um, Donkey Kong 64's minecart areas. You had to reach on both sides of the track to um, grab things off to the sides. Wow, this is really crazy. All right, keep going. Oh, what's that? Oh, I've run out of minecart juice, I guess, before I got to the green thing. I guess I'll try again oh, from my safe state, actually. It's easier. <laughs> Given, sa Given actually says this makes him want uh, DK64 GBA. <laughs> oh, Cambodian's here. Hello, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, hold on. I missed a bit of chat here. Yeah, so going back a bit, Tony's saying that Haunted Mansion is a popular IP, but it's had many failed adaptations. This is true. Um, the 2003 movie was considered a flop. Um, that potion reset my skull gauge, so I don't know what that is. Uh, there was, there's also been two comic series. There was one in 2005 to 2007 and a more recent one in 2015. I'm not sure if that's considered uh, a success or not, but um, there's also there's another upcoming live action film based on it um, in addition to the 2003 one. Uh, I, I don't understand this. <laughs> uh, I'll pay a bit more attention this time, I guess, but let's see. Oh, the, okay, so get, Tony's going into it. Um, the movie by Guillermo del Toro, which I heard was upcoming, I guess is in development hell possibly or been canceled, according to Tony. There was also a planned animated series and it's all been canceled. So I'm just mashing A and I think that might be too much because my minecart meter is going down a lot. I'm picking these up. Does that refill it? Let's find out. Um, da -da -da. Oh yeah, I actually did hear about that, probably from you, Tony, but he's, Tony's saying um, there was an interesting idea where 
on your phone you can do missions related to the ghosts getting lost in the park and returning them to the park so it's like an uh, AR or even an ARG sort of thing where an alternate reality game in Disneyland you'd walk around with your phone using an app okay so those batteries do recharge the minecart meter as long as you grab them and I'll get this too good uh, yeah that sounded interesting actually I was always keen on ARGs since um, sort of being into the one that was out for Lost, the show Lost. They did an ARG for that, or a few. And then, of course, there's the Slender Man web series ARGs, which are always, I'm always keen on. Okay, so we're now in a new area. I'll save there. Great. And I'll catch up on chat a bit, I'll pause it. Ooh, because that minecart bit took it out of me. Um, da -da 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 -da. Given set, uh, Tony says that Ghoulies, Grab by the Ghoulies, the rare game, would have been a funny parody of Haunted Mansion for a theme park ride. Maybe make it a more thrilling ride, yes. Oh, okay, the Harvey Birdman game was a clone of uh, Ace Attorney, but it was actually published by Capcom. <laughs> um, Ken Birdian's talking about the conduit, it, supposedly doesn't work well in Dolphin, unfortunately. And it was ported to Android, but that's been removed from the Play Store. Man, that sucks. I have found a few Google Play Store mirror sites that like archive apps that were on the store. So maybe it'll be there, but yeah. But pe <laughs> people in chat are really enjoying the, um, the 3D minecart section. <laughs> uh, Cam Birdian says that the tracks look oddly smooth for the GBA. <laughs> and Tony suggesting if I get bored of this I could play Adventures in the Magic Kingdom was that the Mickey Mouse one or is that uh, the other one there's a few games that are mostly Japan only that are either like recreations in a way of um, the Disney parks or they're set in the Disney parks there's one where you're Mickey Mouse going through the different areas of Tokyo Disneyland yeah it's pretty cool alright purr purr you found keys the mansion pet oh so it's not a key it's keys the mansion pet oh good grief but it's like a, a living key so it is a key but it's also a oh, i'm confused all right what's this password great got a bonus card excellent so i will use that key uh okay adventures in the magic kingdom is the one on the nas mm -mm -mm. let's look at my keys keys cool so it's got kind of a grimacing face on it, which looks sort of like, oh, did I fall down? That was weird. Box is here, can I climb up to, yeah, you need to double jump actually to get up there. No, getting to that window didn't get me anywhere. But double jumping will not get me onto that roof, so. Uh, what do I do now? Can I get off here? No. There's this sort of constant flashing color shift on the screen, which I think might, maybe it's supposed to be lightning, but I find it really distracting. Ah. There we go. Tony says, Tokyo Disneyland for SNES is great. Um, and the GB version of it is entirely a reference to an attraction that Gibbon loves. Which attraction is that? Ooh, a leap of faith into the air is very safe if taken with care. You know, when I hear leap of faith, I think save state. <laughs> hey, there we go. Lovely. Very effective. All right, I see a horn vine, so let's take care of that. Your fright gauge is climbing. The fear is starting to gnaw. Find Jones in the garden. He'll tell you more. So I guess that's what the skull meter is? Ow. No, no, no. I thought I said phone. Phone. There we go. Yes. Good. More cards. I already had one of those. I can already see the changing codes. It's going to be a bit tedious, but it's making a different noise.
Uh, the attraction Tony was talking about is Cinderella's Mystery Tour. And yes, Gibbon agrees. Out of balcony. Tokyo Disneyland for SNES saves the best attraction for last. Says Gibbon. Ugh, what? The wrong type? Alright, so it's currently gold, I guess, and I need to change it to silver somehow. Yeesh. Well, there's other doors inside the mansion that I should be able to open with the gold one because there were definitely gold symbols that showed up. <sighs> Gibbons playing Mega Man 11 and saying it's hard. <laughs> yeah, no surprise. And in fact, Bert says that's a sign of a good Mega Man game. Oh, okay. Flying tiles. I missed that. And I'm getting quite low on health, so... Can I exit... How do I exit? Do I have to go back through here? Okay, I gotta go back through the minecart ride again. You, are you ready, everyone? Um, oh, I gotta play this again first. Fine. Now, don't tell me. Oh, don't tell me. I used up that card when I played it in the last game. That's, oh, that's irritating. Okay, it's all consumable. All right, I'll pick to match what he's put in and then hopefully yeah okay so I've managed him which means I can go in great Ugh. so I'm gonna have to come back here using more consumable cards when I find a way to get a silver key that's irritating oh well I'll get over it uh. so my take on Mega Man 11 is I haven't played it but I played Mighty Number no. 9 recently and really liked it. So screw the haters, Mighty Number no. 9 is great. Um, and I like the things that I tried to do differently from the Mega Man formula, whereas Mega Man 11 is nothing but Mega Man formula through and through. I guess they have that like extra gear system thing. So you can like go faster or shoot harder sometimes if you want to. I don't know, it seems like a pretty minor tweak gimmick thing but that's like the main new thing in the game the other thing I heard about it is that it um, delves into the backstory of Wily and White a bit so that's something <sighs> so don't tell me I have to grind for cards on like enemy types possibly Oh, that's right. We've got to kill some rats. Ow. Okay, it's telling me that I shouldn't be shooting the plant with the eagle code, but now I'm just trying to hit the rats because the plant isn't going to give me health. Ow, ow! Great. A tiny bit of health. I'll try and get some, a bit more. Uh, can I shoot the ghosts? I can. Ah! Maybe I need a different code for them. But it didn't tell me I didn't. I needed a different code, whereas it did when I was shooting the plant. So that tells me that I can actually kill these things if I shoot them hard enough. That might be a fool's errand. Ah, okay. So, oh, that, that looks like a bronze color. Okay, so I have the wrong key for that too. Ooh, a lot of backtracking and stuff. Let me um, do a little map looking. Yeah, so I guess the mansion's not terribly huge. But you're going to be backtracking over it a lot to get different keys and stuff. Oh, I better catch up on chat. Um, yes, so Gibbon found a graphical glitch in Mega Man 11 that bothers him. Very noticeable in a stage with a lot of ladders. Um, Tony s says this game is very ambitious, but it also looks poorly thought out. Yeah, that might be why it was cancelled, but um, ambitious, like that's a plus. Um, I think they could have released it and it would have been you know seen as a pretty decent licensed game with the 
and with the whole, whole 3D graphics effects, um, would have got some attention. The fact that it wasn't ever released, but then the prototype ROM leaked on the internet gives it a kind of allure and mystique. Um, but even without that, I think it's it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Um, da, da, da. Yeah, Tony says that he loves the sound effect, that huge slap that happens every time you hit something with the phone charge. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit uh, obnoxious. <laughs> and yeah, Gibbon likes the lore in Mega Man 11. It starts with a flashback of them in university and Wily is sleeping in <laughs> pajamas with a skull motif. Okay, I have the keys. So does it open this door? No. All right, we're gonna try and get another ballroom card because that's powerful. So back to codes. Oh no, I'm already on eagle, so we'll beat up these eagles. All right, I already have a coin, haven't figured out how to use them, so kill some mice. Here. Cool. I have no idea like how this is supposed to work. Yes, I got another card. Good. Now, which door can I open with this keys? And how can I get a bit more health? Uh, right. So I talked about the console game and high voltage software, but. This game that I'm playing actually, of course, was made by someone else. It was made by Pocket Software, which we saw in the splash screen at the start. Um, sorry, Pocket Studios. Um, High Voltage is based in the US, but Pocket Studios is based in the UK. Yeah, 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 shut up. I'm not trying to hit that. I'm trying to hit these guys. So I think I've noticed one or two Britishisms in the text so far. But yeah, the game is supposed to be set in New Orleans. I guess most of my familiarity with the Haunted Mansion concept comes from playing Epic Mickey, where a lot of areas and worlds in that game are based on Disneyland stuff. Are you kidding? The wrong type? Frick, what? Okay, I just didn't have it selected. That was a misleading uh, text box there. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, yeah, so there's a, an area in Epic Mickey called the Bog Easy, which is like a New Orleans swamp. And then there's a town, a little town that's sort of like New Orleans-esque. And then you go into like a haunted mansion area. And it's got some of the same characters, but slightly changed. Like, there's a woman who is inside a crystal ball, crystal ball, like she's a spirit head of like a witch or something, called Madame Leota, and she's named after one of the Imagineers who helped create the ride, uh, the attraction. Um, so in Epic Mickey, she's called Madame Leona. So it's like, oh, it's a different character, but it's still kind of the same. Uh, da, da, da. First floor bedroom consumed in dread. Avoid the nasties or end up dead. Oh, very threatening. Take this though. Um, but yeah, Pocket Studios. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I mentioned the theory about why it was cancelled. It's because of the publisher being bought out and then the new uh, corporate overlord saying, no, we don't like this. Aha, the leaf. Bronze leaf, what a relief. A perfect tonic for Key's teeth. I think that very soon you should go down and explore the games room. Okay. Go down and explore the games room. But how do I use the leaf? Ugh. C. I wonder if that's important. The giant floating C because there was an M in the hallway. Hmm. Anyway. So I looked up Pocket Studios' development history, 
Um, they didn't. They haven't had as much success as high voltage have in their years of um, existence. Pocket Studios has only been around. They only were around for five years. Founded in 2000, and they by 2004 they'd closed down, unfortunately. Um, I didn't go too deep on the develop on the individual developers and where they are nowadays, but um, while Pocket Studios existed, um, they made a few interesting things. They mainly worked on Nintendo handhelds, so they made a version of Alone in the Dark for the Game Boy Color. So Alone in the Dark was a very, you know, one of the original survival horror franchises. Um, I'm pro I'm I'm probably gonna play one of those games at some point this month in spooky month um, most of them have well okay the first few have like two selectable protagonists um, a man and a woman uh, but there's like one spin-off that you just play as a little girl and um, it's quite short so anyway I was gonna play that at some point probably yeah anyway so what else did Pocket Studios do? That's right. They made the Game Boy Advance version of LEGO Races 2. So there was a connection between High Voltage and um, Pocket Studios even before they both worked on versions of this game. Uh, and the other connection was that they also worked on a Star Wars game. They did Flight of the Falcon on the Game Boy Advance. What else did they do? Uh, the GBA version of Fellowship of the Ring, which was that odd thing where um, EA had the license... No. Yeah, EA had, EA had the license for the movies, uh, but not the books, and someone made a Fellowship of the Ring game based on the book. Or, I, don't, I don't remember. It's complicated. But turns out there's a Fellowship of the Ring game, but it's not based on the movies. Um, it's not bad, actually, at least the console version. I've, I owned it back in the day. I don't know about the GBA version. There's a lot of GBA versions of Lord of the Rings games, and I don't remember which one's which. Some of them are RPGs and different stuff. They all look pretty ugly, to be honest, but um, one day I'm going to play them all, probably. Um, Pocket Studios also did an Army Man game. I've played an Army Man game on stream before. Uh, in the form of Portal Runner. But this one is not that one. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, that's all I had for Pocket Studios. And they had this. They made this game, but it's not on like their record since it was never officially released. So, Yeah, one thing that the video that I mentioned, um, Port Center, the, the Port Center video about this game. One thing it brings up is how little information there is about this uh, game online. Um, how scarce, uh, how scarcely known it is. Okay, what have you got for me this time? You want to know what gives you more fright? Anything that pursues you during this night. If your fright gauge ever reaches the top, you'll be back in the hallway with less time on the clock. To clear your fright, don't run and hide. Just pick up three treats in Ramsley's Ghost Ride. Three treats. Did I see treats? It's not like a potion thing. Maybe that was a treat. Okay. Interesting how the UI kind of slides over the screen. Whenever dialogue pops up, the bottom bar, it doesn't just go away. The whole sort of play area shifts. Um... Mm -mm. Yeah, Gibbon says it is frustrating when there's a game that, that there's zero info on on the internet. Yeah, a bit more understandable in this case since the game was never released, but still. Um, I think I'm finding this interesting at least, um, and certainly ambitious for the GBA platform. Don't know what was hurting me there. Okay, so he told me about not letting my fry get too high, but I haven't really gained anything for progress. I got the bronze leaf, but I don't know how to use it, like add it to my key to change it. Um, piece of eight. Oh, a piece of eight. 
pirates connection. Oh, oh, it's that simple. Okay, I just go to the menu and select it. So now I have a bronze key. So we have to remember or just stumble around until we find where we needed to use the bronze key on. And yeah, I think the first place I can think of was from the ballroom, the door at the sort of north end of the screen. <laughs> Given agrees that the graphics are great, and he wasn't joking about a GBA version of DK64. Yeah. We kind of got a taste of that with the title screen of uh, the Game Boy Color port of Donkey Kong Country, which sort of mimicked the title screen of DK64 itself, uh, with DK holding a barrel and throwing it at the menu item. It's pretty cool. The games room is a place of play, but beware the hands to claw their way. All right, don't tell me we've got a mini game to deal with. Aha, there's another leaf here. Watch out for the hand. Yeah, just walk all over that billiards table, no problem. Gold leaf, now there's a surprise. All the better for Keys' eyes. What does that mean? Oh, don't tell me that's consumable too. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, maybe it's not, maybe it'll come back, we'll see games room card so I see a clown I see a charge do I need charge right now no I'm fine so there's one more door out of here so I'll go talk to the machine maybe that's the fortune teller I do have a coin hello greetings yes I am say fortune teller your destiny I see use coin yes your destiny, I see. Take this code that is the key within the lion's mouth. Cool. That wasn't much of a rhyme, but I don't think this guy's rhyming. It's more a clown than the usual fortune teller. Cool, so now I can destroy lion heads. I know there was one outside. And maybe one upstairs too? Hmm. Is there one in here? No, there's an angel over there. Oi, bugger off. I'll go for the outside one first. Okay. Did I suck a code? Yes, I did. Take this! Ha ha ha. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, that was hard for a graveyard card. All right, upstairs it is, I guess. There might have been another bronze door that I recall. Eee, where was that? Ugh. Where was that? Um, oh, right. I mentioned that Madame Leota, the sort of crystal ball head person who appears in pretty much every adaptation. I haven't seen her in this yet, but she's in Epic Mickey, she's in the ride, she's in the game, the other game, I think. Um, she's the movie. But yeah, I said she was based on an Imagineer named Leota Toons. Um, and she actually played the head, hence why I guess it's named after her. Sorry, hence why is apparently incorrect, as I've been told, so I shouldn't say that. <clears throat> But yeah, so she played the head in terms of acting as the head, but she didn't do... Yeah, I don't understand this at all. I got a grow. So there's like a grow and a shrink. So I need a grow and a colored leaf. But why is there a shrink and a grow? What's the difference? I don't know. Ooh, now I'm rhyming. Huh. So now, wasn't this room, was it? I haven't found any friends so far. And presumably that opens up the locks because that's what it said when I went to the locked door. Have I been here? Yes, I've been here. That's locked. Okay. 
Oh, gosh. Um, so yeah, Leota Toombs played the head, but they decided that her voice was too high-pitched and um, soft to be an effective, like, witch ghost person. So they dubbed her over with another actress. Same actress who played Maleficent, actually. Um, but you can still hear the voice of Leota Toombs as the little girl at the end of the ride, apparently. So that's what I heard. the other bloody door bronze door oh I know it was at the top it was after yeah it was after the ride so I have to go through the ride again okay so conservatory which is through here Okay, let's go, butler boy. Crivens. You know, he's probably Baron Von Gaul in disguise. Guess I have to pick this to match what he picked. Good. Let's do it. <clears throat> so. Looking out for those treats. There was one. I'm not sure what it really represents. Um, I think the hand dictates what direction you go on those splits. So you don't want to go into the one that leads to a block, but I'm not sure. Maybe it, it seems to do it automatically. Yeah. Just there to throw you off or something. that charge I might not make this one yeah okay oh, do, 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 do. okay so I thought I would talk about the fact that this is based on a Disney ride so you almost every Disney movie that comes out um, from a certain era um, has video games based on it so ever since they started making licensed games in like the uh, mid 80s I think basically any new movie that came out would get a game and then they even went back and made games for older movies too but actually having games based on Disneyland rides speaks to the cultural power of Disneyland as an institution and also the effort and design that goes into making these ride and attraction experiences, like I said before. Um, uh, yeah, I must be able to switch tracks because otherwise, how could I reach that one charge on the left? Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Another way of looking at it, I suppose, is that when Disney wants to make a movie and they don't want to come up with a new plot um, they go to the well of a Disneyland ride um, to convert its plot into a movie and that could be considered, I don't know not lazy but just you know <laughs> mining uh, the resources they have See that charge over there? There's no way I can reach it. I'm all the way to the right. Anyway, we can see that Yaz is wearing a few rings. She likes her ornamentation, obviously. And who doesn't, am I right? Okay. So I, I found a list of movies that had been based on Disneyland rides. And there are a few I hadn't even heard of before. So obviously we all know Pirates of the Caribbean, that's a very successful movie franchise. It's had a bunch of games as well that are mostly based on the movies. I don't think any of the games have been original stories set in that universe. But 
that's been a case where the success of the movie has gone back and influenced the ride because they changed some of the pirate characters to resemble ones from the movie like um, Johnny Depp Captain Johnny Depp um, but yeah the, there were some other ones Tower of Terror got a movie in 1997 with um, Chris, uh, Steve Gutenberg was it? it was a Gutenberg I forget which one um, and Kirsten Dunst as a younger lady you know pre Spider-Man Um, and then what was next? Mission to Mars, actually, in 2000, was apparently loosely based on a Disney World Mars thing of some kind. I remember that coming out around the same time as a different Mars movie by another company, uh, The Red Planet. And yeah, I've seen The Red Planet, but I haven't seen Mission to Mars. I think that's <laughs> the order of things. Um, so I don't know what it's about. Probably some kind of mission, presumably to... I don't know. Let's say Mars. Oh, I always miss that one. Damn. I need to get that one or I'm not going to make it. Oh, wait. Oh, I am going to make it. Oh, good. Okay. Thank goodness we don't have to do that again. Okay, let's go. Well, we, we're going to have to do it a few more times, I'm pretty sure. But we do have the bronze key, so we're going to go over. Whoops. Wrong button. It was up on top, wasn't it? Had to go past the leap of faith. Um, what else? Country Bears? Oh no, that was silver! It wasn't bronze! I wasted it all. I wasted all my resources. And I'm cursed. Forever. Cursed. Cursed. Silver key! Oh man. Alrighty. That's really irritating. Okay, so yes. Uh, country Bears. That was really weird. It was like puppets. The 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 bears in the movie were they were talking bears. Um, why did I save once I got over here? If I'd written the password down, I could load back. But no, I'm gonna have to do this. Yep. Okay. On the way back. <sighs> um, yes, so Country Bears. It was weird. Um, it was like Haley Joel Osment, who was riding high on like Sixth Sense. Um, and I suppose that'd be after AI. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't remember. But anyway, it was about like bears playing music and stuff, but. The interesting thing was that they were all in costumes or like puppets kind of things, or even animatronics, you know, I don't know. But they were sort of, you know, they weren't animated bears, they weren't real bears, obviously. Um, so it's one of those interesting juxtapositions of puppet creatures and uh, humans in the same movie. Although it was apparently a terrible movie, so yeah. And then Pirates of the Caribbean followed in 2003, as well as Haunted Mansion in the same year, the Eddie Murphy movie that I was talking about. Blast. Which uh, this game was sort of released for, to tie into, anyway. Even if it doesn't um, match the same plot. It's a similar kind of plot. Just people falling afoul of the mansion and then their loved ones rescuing them. Same idea. So what was after that? That's right, there was a big gap after that. Um, well, I guess there wasn't a gap because Pirates of the Caribbean sequels kept getting released in all this time. There's now f five of them, I think. I haven't seen the most recent one. But I saw all the others. Played the Lego game too, but by that time I'd forgotten like the entire plot of all the movies. So it was really just confusing because this is back when they w didn't have voice uh, dubs. So they were miming all their actions. I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> this is really confusing. Ah, damn. Can I rewind? Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> no, more rewind. Okay. 
excellent. Um, yeah, but between uh, Haunted Mansion and Tomorrowland in 2015, there weren't any other original game movie conversions. All right, I'm back here. I know there was a second bronze key door. So where is it? Where did my original bronze key get me? To the game room. Why don't I ask the caretaker for advice? He might help me. But yeah, Tomorrowland is also kind of loosely based on a Disney World themed area. Um, I also remember that area from Epic Mickey, although it also took cues from Tron in Epic Mickey. Doo -doo. Uh, my keys, keys loves bedroom, bronze leaf, use shrink and go scattered around the mansion in conjunction with metallic leaf to open doors in the same light type. Okay, so when do I use shrink and when do I use grow? And then they just sort of randomly appear in different places. Bedroom bronze leaf. So I found a bronze leaf in the bedroom, yes. Oh, this is getting exhausting. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, the, as well as an upcoming, possibly cancelled, uh, Haunted Mansion new movie. There's also a Jungle Cruise movie in development, apparently. Um, and so there's been sort of a revival in recent years of the theme park movie adaptation thing. <laughs> when there was sort of a boom in the 2000s. Uh, there's a Jungle Cruise book, audiobook. Oh, you mean the one that infamously has John Lasseter in it? Um, and which really should have been changed when all the nonsense came out about him being, you know, a sexual predator and, um, well, a predator, assaulter, like harasser yeah harasser I guess anyway all that came out and Disney handled it pretty badly in terms of not just firing him um, John Lasseter that is and then the book still came out unchanged with a caricature of that man uh, in it oh, what am I even doing at this point I'm wandering around I have what did the clown tell me at the fortune teller machine? I don't even remember. Uh, this is a, a kind of game I, I need to concentrate on more and maybe even take notes rather than talking over it in a stream, possibly. Let's talk to the fortune teller again. I had one, I guess, I, because I used one, but I picked up two because I killed another thing in the... Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe this is enough of this game. I've run out of notes for it, um, and I feel like I'm going around in circles, and I haven't even rescued one of my friends. Yeesh. Um, let's see. Bronze key... In the games room. Let's just try. Oh, I have the eagle spell. Nope, I don't have the eagle spell. Oh, you know what we can do with a code? We can open up all the areas with that sort of debug code or whatever it is. Special password. Grow gold, shrink gold. Why do I have a grow gold and a shrink gold? It makes no sense. I don't understand. Okay codes let's do this how do I enter a code wow there are so many look how many there are this is gonna this is a long game I can tell so is this no hmm. all right I'm gonna say that I'm kind of done with this for now so I'm gonna see if I can get to a point where I enter a code and 
maybe open it up a bit and explore a bit more. Otherwise, I do have a backup game. Um, here we go, password. All right. So all the passwords are on um, cutting room floor, like I said. There's a code to <laughs> change the game into black and white mode, so it removes all the color. Don't know why you'd want that. Tough Goth Chick is the code for invincibility, which could be helpful. Why don't we do that anyway? T O V G H G Zero. Yeah, they've helpfully removed characters that could be ambiguous. Chick. Cool. Oh. Oh, you can only do one at a time. Uh, hmm. All right, well, we'll do the one. If we can only pick one, it should be the one that opens up all areas. There's another code, Man U for champions, which is, you know, a soccer reference. But it's unknown what that one does. But I will enter the other code. One big Mac N Cheese And that should open up all the areas according to this So then we might see a few more things and then we'll pack this game in and I do have a backup as I said but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, in the meantime I guess there's a bit of follow-up from previous streams of things I've found out which I wanted to sort of correct or follow up on. First one is that I was talking about um, Armin Gessert and the development of Gianna Sisters games recently because I played hard and heavy and Armin Gessert uh, founded the company that worked on, he founded I think all three companies that eventually made uh, Gianna games and was deeply involved in all of them but I noticed that he wasn't involved in uh, Twisted Dreams and the reason for that being that he actually passed away in between the creation of um, the DS game and Twisted Dreams which is unfortunate and I didn't realize that at the time um, but there you go, sad news. All right, so now that all doors are unlocked, we can just roam around and check out the kind of places that are in this mansion. So we've got the dining room, and this is where the silver leaf is. Good. Yes, the dining room is a place to eat, but beware and tread with careful feet. So you'd get that, get there through this hallway, which I also haven't been in. The armor hall. Interesting. Okay, next follow-up. Yes, so I was looking for games to play during October that were, you know, spooky themed. My original intention actually was to only play games where you're playing as what would consider what would traditionally be considered a monster, like uh, you know, a werewolf or a skeleton or a witch or something. Um, in this game, you're playing as a goth, I suppose, <laughs> but that's not the same thing. So I was doing some research. Oh, there's another ride here. Let's not do that. I don't have the cards to play the game to do it. Uh, yeah, so I already actually played one called Bride of Frankenstein a few weeks back because you're playing as the bride who is a Frankenstein's monster character kind of zombie type thing. Um, so <laughs> I was looking at other games in that sort of category based on Frankenstein works and noticed that there's a game called Frankenstein Junior where you play as the son of Frankenstein and I was like okay that could be interesting but then I looked at screenshots and it's the exact same game as Bride of Frankenstein just with the main character swapped out which <laughs> was pretty bizarre but maybe they decided that you can't sell a game with a 
female protagonist. Maybe that's what they thought. But they're dead wrong. Look at all the awesome games I've played this year. Ooh, what's this? In the study, there's another fortune teller machine and there's also, I guess, floating books. So poltergeist activity. Interesting. Um, oh yes, uh, last week I played Mischief Makers and what I didn't realize at the time, because sometimes I theme my streams around uh, events or occasions. Um, and last week was International Week of the Deaf, which I didn't realize until afterwards, but even if I had, I'm not sure if uh, <laughs> I could have found a game that really speaks to the deaf experience or is themed around deafness. So I don't know, see if you can think of anything. <laughs> um, I missed the occasion anyway, but I thought it was an interesting thing to think about, considering that games are mostly, you know, they're a visual and audio, audio medium, because you're doing both. Okay, so now it's a library. Yes, bookshelves, of course. And a sunken uh, area. I do like the old sunken living room. Oh, caretaker's in here. Interesting. Explore even deeper to unlock a tomb. Interesting. <clears throat> Maybe that invincibility code did work. No, because I reset after I entered it, didn't I? Oh, he's giving his introductory spiel because I haven't actually made progress in this mode. I'm just looking around at the kind of assets that the developers put in the game and how the different rooms look. So, a few more to see. In the meantime... Um, I know that was it for follow-up. So, I don't know. How's everyone else doing? Any conversation topics? Otherwise, smash the clockwork soldier to get Ricky free or he will be waiting in this gallery. Okay, so I don't have the clockwork soldier spell, but apparently you get to this point and that's where one of the friends is trapped. <laughs> Gibbon's still dying a lot in Mega Man 11. I've been playing Mega Man games actually. For Game Club, I. Um, selected Mega Man Zero 2 or Rockman Zero 2 as I know it. Um, ooh, Master Bedroom Fancy. Yeah, Gibbon says he does admire how they managed to rhyme everything and I agree. Most things, not every character has the rhyming um, uh, shtick. But those that do, it's amusing and fun. It's a fun touch. Um, another bedroom with a ghostly dwell in time that passes by the hour bell. Okay, <laughs> bit of a stretch. Oh, there's more doors, always more doors. I want to check that map again. Notice how the color kind of fades out while I'm on that screen. That's probably what modern chrome mode looks like all the time. Yeah, so that's okay. Oh, so I might have been able to get in there. Oh no, you can get out that way with that gold key, but not in? Oh, that's very confusing. Anyway, yeah, since I played Rockman Zero 2, I went on to play a lot of other Mega Man games that I've had on my backlog, starting with uh, Extreme 1 and Extreme 2, which are spin-offs to the X sub-series on the Game Boy Color. And I enjoyed those, and then I played Mighty Number no. 9, which of course is a Mega Man game through and through, um, and loved it. And now I'm up to Azure Striker Gun Vault, which is sort of a successor to the Zero series that um, Inter Creates made. But yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, I've got sort of some quibbles with it. Um, nice paintings. Hmm. Exclamation mark. So I've seen a C and M and exclamation mark. Maybe it spells something out. Ah, 
I see there's momentum. You have to get a running jump start sometimes. Oh, wow. Are they supposed to look like that? <gasps> oh, secret entrance in the games room. I probably could have used that. That might have been the key to the next step of progress. Using the secret fireplace door. Interesting. Classic haunted mansion type thing. Um, and yeah, the next thing I've got to play is Mighty Gun Vault and then Mighty Gun Vault Burst. And of course, Azure Striker Gun Vault 2. So looking forward to all that. Um, bup, bup, bup. Uh, so I think we've seen most of the mansion at this point. We don't have the powers to save our friends. So that might be where we have to leave it. But it's, it's a pretty interesting game. And yeah, like maybe a bit more polish would have helped. Um, and, you know, the backtracking and the managing of your items is pretty tedious uh, but still I'm impressed it's fine it's pretty good so should we play something else let's play something else da, 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 da. I do have something else ready to go oh what happened to my window Bear with me a second. Do, do, do. Okay, so the next thing is this thing. Which will be with you shortly. Oops, not that. Just close that. Ah, oh, you've seen all my plans. I'm not being secretive about them. Okay, that should work. Okay, so following up on the Haunted Mansion for GBA is another game for GBA called Nancy Drew Message in a Haunted Mansion for GBA. So this is a game that was, oh, that didn't actually show up before. So you didn't see all my plans, haha. -ha. This was released in the year 2000 for the computer and then was also ported to Game Boy Advance, strangely enough, which is an interesting choice for a point-and-click adventure. So, uh, wow, this music, it's something else. Okay, dear Bess, I'm in San Francisco helping Hannah's friend, Rose Green. You're throwing a lot of names at me, game. I have no idea who these people are. She just bought an old mansion that she plans on making into a bed and breakfast, but a lot of strange accidents have slowed things down. Is it just bad luck or something else? I'd better find out. Nancy. So, okay, we start off in the Chinese room. Fantastic. And we're moving a cursor around our Game Boy Advance screen with the D-pad. And then we're getting up close to investigate things. The bedpost is loose. I might be able to pry it off. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> this, this might have worked well on the DS. So, Nancy Drew. Uh, you might know of. She's been sort of a heroine of detective mystery stories for girls since 1930 and has consistently gotten new novels uh, pretty much every year since then, I think. There's been a few hiatuses, I think, um, and some changes of direction of the series. Okay, big puzzle here. So where does it start? beginning is more difficult than it seems oh boy ten daughters are reunited in order okay I have no idea what any of that means maybe we'll find out <laughs> so yeah first person click around yeah I, I need a prying tool to help me with a few things it seems um, so yeah Nancy Drew is often considered a feminist icon because yeah a lot of uh, women have cited her as an inspiration over the years um, a lot of influential women in various fields uh, 
the Wikipedia article for Nancy Drew is pretty interesting because it goes into each er era of the franchise and how the management and the companies that have owned the property have gone in different directions with it. All the books are ghostwritten by different people, um, so they can be inconsistent, but there's also, like, you know, I guess... Um, ideas about the character that have changed and the interpretations so the the article's really interesting in how it goes into criticisms of the way the character is handled in each era and how oh, some people think she was ruined in this era some people think ah oh, here we go wow so i'm guessing that graphics from the pc version have just been directly ported into the gba here and it doesn't always suit very well. Anyway, hello, Nancy, you've arrived safely, but there is danger around you, and I bet you don't believe in ghosts. And you do. There's an unhappy spirit here, and angry too. Can the ghost tell you who caused the accidents? I don't know, but the name Valdez has something to do with the mansion. Um, what else do you know about Mr. Valdez? I have to get ready for tonight. Then we'll find out more. Until then, I must not be disturbed. Mmm, suspicious. Ah, uh, I suspect you, Abby. Jacques. Um, do do do. Yes. So, the original idea of Nancy Drew was that the Hardy Boys books by this publisher. I didn't note their name. I forget what the name is. But they were really popular, and they were also popular with girls. So um, the guy, despite his personal feelings about women that they should be in the house, he this is what the Wikipedia article says, he devised uh, a new series to capitalise on his audience, um, starring a spunky girl detective um, who could, like... She was very active... Uh, character in in this series anyway daughters of diligence and the gold of nine dragons what does this mean by the way this kanji it's um uh it's that's the kanji for woman so the daughter connection i suppose and i needed to line up 10 daughters in a row or something i noticed that the music track that was playing before has disappeared uh this game might have been made very cheaply and contained bugs. Can't investigate anything. Fine. I need that pry bar somehow. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, so this game itself, uh, Message in a Haunted Mansion, was made in 1995. No, sorry. The game was in 2000 but it's based on a book from 1995. Um, which is interesting. Um, th the areas that Wikipedia listed for the Nancy Drew series sort of went up to 1993, and then the next one didn't start until uh, 2000 or something. So this sort of came in a transitionary period, this book, apparently. Ooh. Ah, I found a clue. Swanee River. That's the kanji for river. Mmm, very interesting. What does it mean? Who knows? Let's talk to this guy. Charlie, hello Charlie. Um, let's not get right down to business. I'm Nancy. What a house. It needs work. Um, oh, the flirty option. Uh, or it could just be an investigation. I don't know. <laughs> what do you know about... Oh, hi, Zach. <laughs> You're a bit late. I'm sorry. <laughs> he says sorry. That's okay. We've, we've actually moved on from the Haunted Mansion game that you recommended to me. I'm sorry that you uh, didn't get to see me playing it. But I kind of got stuck at a dead end and... Yeah, so now I'm playing Nancy Drew game about a haunted mansion instead. Uh, will the house be ready? 
sure, now that you're here. Wait a minute, what? Are you sure of that? There'll always be accidents and delays with such a big project, but why so many? I don't know. I wish people wouldn't blame me. I know what I'm doing. I need to get back to work. I'm fixing some floorboards, so be careful. I think Rose is looking for you. Hmm. Everyone's being pretty shifty. Yeah, I mean, you'll be able to watch the archive, but um, it's, it's it would have been nice to have you chatting in the chat, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Oh, a thing came up. That's too bad. That's fine. I understand. Um, yeah, it's too bad. Oh, well, who's this? Rose. Hello, Rose. Hello, Nancy. We can sure use your help. Nothing seems to get done on time. I think this is meant to be America. Nancy does kind of travel to different places sometimes to solve mysteries there. But most of it's just set in America, I think. Okay. What an interesting house. The papers that Abby found might have been information. It's an old-time saloon in the basement. Maybe it was a hotel. What exactly happened with the accidents? Scaffolding collapsed and we had a gas leak. Is it just bad luck? No. Maybe it's cursed. I wonder if this old house would be worth more burnt to the ground. Ooh. Just like in Haunted Mansion from Disney, we have a cell phone. But this one probably is not going to shoot magical blasts. Uh, it wasn't a bad thing that came up, just kind of important. Mm, yeah, fair enough. That's okay. So, oh, now there's a puzzle. I'm going to fit some wood tiles into a floor. Where's that? Is that back downstairs? I want to do a puzzle. I like puzzles. Ooh. Clue. Fire insurance. Kanji for fire. Are we, are we in China or Japan or what's going on? Asian Pacific Fire Insurance Company. Yeah, I, it didn't really explain to me quite clearly where we are exactly. But I started in the Chinese room. Um, Chicago, oh, San Francisco. Okay, well, that's, yeah, there's, there's like um, a significant amount of Japanese immigration in uh, San Francisco, actually. Or I historically, I mean, um, anyway. Uh, ooh, she's updated her fire insurance policy. Mm. And the sole benefactor. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, there's a clue. So Rose, that's a character who's just, just standing behind me now. She And she just mentioned that the house might be worth more burn to the ground. She's totally going to arson awesome this place. Poor Charlie doing all that work. It will all be for naught. Uh, Zach says he'll check out the archive. Cool, thanks. Thanks for the support. It's a really interesting game. Um, Haunted Mansion. This one, not so much. I mean, it's interesting in that, like, it's weird how you can see that they've translated a PC game with a point-and-click interface to a Game Boy Advance, and whether you, how well you think that works, you know. The parlor. Who's in the parlor? Nobody. I want to do that floorboard puzzle, so maybe go back under. Oh, better check this. Give me the clues. Uh, no clues. <clears throat> so yeah, I haven't seen any ghosts so far, but I guess um, the suspicion is that the accidents are caused by haunting. I don't know. There's actually uh, three different Nancy Drew games that are supposed supposedly uh, based on a haunted house uh, concept. Oh, hello, Phoenix. That was in the... Yep, it is missing an eye. That was in the rhyme back then. That was something about a phoenix's eye. But I haven't found an eye. So I don't know how much the supernatural comes into the Nancy Drew franchise or whether... Um, it's a Scooby-Doo thing where it always turns out to be like a hoax of some kind. Uh, floorboards. Come on, let me do this puzzle. She doesn't want to check out the fireplace while Charlie's there because he'll get ticked off. What's this? What was that? Ah, 
can't look at anything around here. Um, oh yeah, Zach says there's Chinese and Japanese immigration in California. A fair bit. Um, I guess, uh, I don't know. I want to find this puzzle. So I'll talk to Rose again. How's that inlay puzzle coming along? Maybe it's in this room? Mm -mm -mm. Man, I, I haven't played any first-person adventure games except Myst, and that's pretty different. It wasn't, here, it wasn't in the drawer. Ooh, I want those sunglasses. Do, do. Oh no, Zach's proving me wrong. Um, Scooby-Doo, especially lately, has transitioned into the supernatural stuff is real. 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island. By the way, there was a music track in this game. It has completely disappeared. Oh, here it is. Floor tiles. It's over here. Okay. Great. Let's do the puzzle. Cool. Oh, it's a tangram. Oh, man. These are always so difficult to me as a kid. But we're going to give it a go. Can I flip these? Yes, I can. Ooh, slightly different shapes. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, there's basically no sound to the game. Uh, it's kind of annoying me. That really looked like that should have fit there. Oh, well. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense why they would fit in some places and not others. Anyway, um, yeah, like I said, there's three Nancy Drew games that I saw that um, seem to be based on a haunted house thing, and then there were others that had other kinds of supernatural themes as well. Is that it? Yeah, nailed it. And the music's back. Wonderful. Oh no, Zombie Island isn't one of the recent things. Gibbons making us all feel old and pointing out that Zombie Island came out 20 years ago. <laughs> I guess recent in that it wasn't from the, you know, 80s, 70s, 80s or whatever the original cartoon was. Ah, alright. Um, so, Nancy Drew, like I said, for almost 90 years now she's been getting um, book after book but she's also had TV series, a few movies and the video games. I should talk to Rose again since I finished the puzzle. What is this suspicious music all about? Tell me your secrets. I finished it. Wonderful! Can you chip off the broken tiles in the hallway ceiling? I set up a ladder for you upstairs. You'll need a chisel or paint scraper. Uh, how do I get that? I guess I'll ask Charlie. Let's ask about Abby. She's suspicious. We taught at the same school. I could not afford this house on my own, so Abby helped me. What is Abby planning for tonight? A seance? Oh, here we go. Here's where the ghosts come into it. Lovely. So the ghosts are causing the accidents. We're going to talk to them. How did you find Charlie? Um, oh, that's suspicious. He just showed up? Mm, wouldn't trust that. And the music track has ended, hasn't looped, and now we're silent again. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, okay, Gibbons are correcting us here. Even the original stuff had tons of supernatural is real uh, type stuff even after the original mysteries run things like ghoul school or 13 ghosts no give me a tool i need something paint scrapers etc how do i get them i can't do anything in this room while that smelly man is around sorry not to stereotype uh tradies or anything i just mean that you know he's been working 
for a while on those glow bullets. Okay, so upstairs, maybe I'll find something there. Um, yeah, so do, 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 do. yeah, um, Nancy Drew has a ton of video games. There's a company called Her Interactive, um, originally known as Games for Her, in that they made games for girls to play, basically. And yeah, pretty much 99% of their output is Nancy Drew licensed games, um, whether it's based on books or original plots. But a lot of them are these kinds of adventure games. Um, yes, get the scraper, wonderful. Now I could go back upstairs and do that thing on the ceiling. Why am I doing all this work? I'm supposed to be solving mysteries or whatever. That's okay, Nancy Drew isn't afraid of a bit of hard work, getting her hands dirty. Because that's just who she is. Um, yeah, so her interactive, um, they're responsible for this one, of course. Um, all the Nancy Drew games that exist, I think, are made by them, except for three of them on the DS, which were by Majesco. Hmm, what's going on here? Where is this ladder? Didn't you say the upstairs corridor? Can't see it anywhere. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting with her interactive. They were a subsidiary of this company called... Um, American Laser Games, which made uh, games on the Laserdisc format that were light gun um, FMV games, sort of like Dragon's Lair or Time Gal, except those aren't FMV. I guess they are FMV, but anyway, whatever. It was games like that. Um, do do. Except for the light gun, so Dragon's Lair doesn't have the light gun. Anyway. Yes, I can use the, the thing on the thing. I don't have to scrape paint. I can use the thing to do this investigation. It's great. So, I've uncovered that within the vent is a hidden speaker, meaning that some of the ghost noises that people may have heard could be faked. Wonderful. That's a clue, that's a, that's a great clue. So her interactive are still um, functioning and still making games, which is wonderful, and still doing Nancy Drew games, of course. Uh, like I said, 99% of them are Nancy Drew stuff. Ha, huh, found a secret key. I haven't found any place to use a key yet, I don't think. Um, yeah, one of their other games, their non-Nancy Drew games, is another one that I was considering playing on stream because it's about, uh, it's sort of like this, you know, the, the adventure mystery solving thing, but it's about vampires. Um, so that's nice and spooky. It's called, oh, it's called The Vampire Diaries because it's based on the books The Vampire Diaries, which also has a successful TV show. Okay, I had a key. I don't know where to use it. Um... Zach says, oh, Zach says there's a GBA version of Broken Sword. Um, that's interesting. It was another attempt at a point and click adventure on the system, but they actually changed it to having you walk around with the D-pad instead of using a cursor. That sounds cool. Yeah, so that would be a third person game with it, or do you sort of walk around with tank controls on the D-pad? <laughs> um, mm. Okay. Oh yeah, the interesting thing about uh, American Laser Games. So they had her interactive as a subsidiary doing this Nancy Drew stuff. That became so successful that um, her interactive managed to become independent. They split off um, and they operated as an independent company. Oh, oh, what does that mean? And then they were so successful after that point that they actually managed to buy out their previous owner. So American Laser Games, the the, uh, the Laserdisc-based FMV format, I guess, didn't go so well. Um, it, it didn't 
continue as a successful uh, business venture. So then they were bought out by their previous subsidiary. Sort of a flip around situation, a turnaround. Uh, we haven't investigated the fireplace. Yes, we have. Um, we looked at that already. What can I use a key on? I guess before, oh, time's almost coming up. I, I've been going for almost two hours. So I hoped I could get to the seance at least. Did I try using the door on Abby's room? If she's saying, oh, oh, is that like a pain sound? Should I be investigating? Oh, I found the ceiling. I have a pain scraper. I guess I'll do that while I'm here. Ooh, I've uncovered a trapdoor. Lovely. Oh, it's locked. <gasps> but I have a key. Oh, great stuff. Wait. Oh, no, wrong key. Dang. So much for that. Um, let's go back to Abby's room and try the key on her door. See if she'll be mad at me. Is this her room? Nope. So I also wanted to talk quickly about other games in this haunted house genre that I could have played. Okay, Abby's room. There's a noise coming from inside. She's making preparations for the seance, so maybe she's sort of chanting or something. All right, I don't know where this key could go. The dumbwaiter wasn't locked, no. Ooh, the rope was cut on the other dumbwaiter, but not this one. Key, maybe downstairs somewhere? I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it. Um, yeah, so when I was still thinking about games where I could play as a monster or, a, or a, like a spooky type character, um, I found one called Goetia. That's probably not how you pronounce it. Um, it's a, it's very recent, actually. It came out in 2016, but it's the idea is that you are the ghost in a haunted house. Um, um, and there's a few games like that where you're a ghost and you're either trying to haunt somebody or you're trying to, I don't know, solve your own murder is, is a popular trope, apparently. Murdered soul suspect is like that. Um, ghost trick is a game where you're a ghost uh, doing polterge poltergeist stuff. There's Haunting Starring Poltergei, of course. Uh, nope. Oh, I wonder if the key goes in the phoenix head. Does that make any sense? Not really, but yeah, that's not a problem here. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, Haunted House games. There's quite a few. Uh, Freddy Fish, I played the third one of those. The second one is called Freddy Fish and the Haunted Schoolhouse, so that's um, a good candidate for that. What's this? Oh! Okay. Oh, what happened? Damn it, I skipped straight past that. I know I can rewind. Okay, I think I got in big trouble for that. Sorry. You did what? I unhooked the chandelier and it crashed. I can't believe it. No wonder Rose asked you to leave. I don't know what got into me. You really goofed up. Don't wreck the next house you stay in, especially ours. So George is her father and Bess is like um, her housekeeper, like servant type person who is sort of a mother figure to Nancy. Um, and yeah, another classic retro mobile phone here on the left good to see of course both of these games were made in the era before smartphones ah uh, well that didn't go so well um password system okay great so yeah freddy fish 2 haunted schoolhouse um there's three nancy drew games like i said the fatal frame series is about ghosts and haunted areas and um the series has this six games in the series and a lot of them um, are mostly 
have female protagonists. Yeah, <laughs> that was the game over screen. <laughs> game over state. You crashed a chandelier. Maybe I might have to do that at a certain point to unmask a ghost or something. I'm really bummed that this key didn't work on my trapdoor. That doesn't make sense. I found a key. I found a lock. Like, what am I missing here? Oh, I'm missing... No, what am I missing? I pressed B and... I think that makes you go backwards or something? I don't know. Um, yes, Clock Tower. I will play that this month, probably. Um, that's a good haunted house kind of game. Although it's not, a, it's, it's not so much ghosts as it is some kind of monster or serial killer kind of thing. So that's, that's a violent one. But yeah, there's a few games in the Clock Tower series and I think in all of them you play as a girl. Um, there's even a spiritual successor to Clock Tower 3 on the PS2 called Haunting Ground, which has a similar setup. And you have a dog companion, so that's nice. Um, what else did I find? Private Idol, which is about, um, it's like a Japanese satin game about idols who uh, are trapped in a haunted mansion, except there's also AI like things. You're helped by this artificial intelligence hologram thing called Navi, which is different to the Zelda Navi. Aha, a box I haven't looked at. I can't read this. <laughs> Thank you, text. Dear sir, blah, 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 auction of property, blah, 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 something, something, whatever. I don't know what that, okay, fine. Um, clues, it's all clues. What else? Oh yeah, there's a couple other ones that are sort of hidden object slash adventure slash puzzle games. So Fear for Sale, House of a Thousand Doors are some names that I've found while doing a search of haunted house games. So all those were interesting. I guess the only ones that I... Oh, and Phantasmagoria, the first one, which is a P, like a PC adventure game with FMV sequences and stuff. It's pretty interesting, third person kind of thing. Oh, I know what to do with things that are stuck. Aww. What does Andiron mean? Hmm. Yeah, Scissor Man is the thing in Clock Tower. Something's missing here. It looks like there's a few plaques on the fireplace missing. Man, the fact that the music just stopped, that's kind of <laughs> dumb. Ah, more things I haven't checked out. Ah, Mahjong. Going with the Asian theme again, I guess. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Don't know why those are important. Three and four specifically. Okay. Is that a clue? Who knows? Um, so yeah, the ones I would maybe consider doing in stream would be Phantasmagoria, Private Idol, Freddy Fish 2. I uh, don't think any of the Faded Frame games I could play. But yeah, I, I will most likely be doing Clock Tower at some point. Um, but there's plenty more in store this month for spooky, spooky times and spooky games. Um, I did find some games where you play as the monster, but I didn't go with that for the whole theme of the whole month. But I think... Um, we're just kind of walking circles here, so and we're well past the time. I'm getting ooh tired. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for coming along, friends and uh, neighbors, all of you. I hope you didn't get too spooked by all the scariness going on today. Um, but yeah, there'll be more spooky, scary stuff all this month. That's my promise to you on my stream. Um, so yeah, we've kind of explored the haunted house genre here today and talked about some of the other games in that genre that fit the heroin theme um and yeah pretty impressed with haunted mansion this one is pretty standard and might not work so well on a Game Boy advance to be honest but yeah thanks very much for coming along and i'll see you next time bye, -bye. <laughs> zach said he's been spooped good and spoopy Excellent. Bye-bye.